the last topic is uh, acute Achilles tendon rupture. I have no disclosure. Uh, Achilles tendon is the largest and strongest tendon in the human body. And uh, this tendon is most commonly uh, tendon rupture uh, as well in the human body. And usually occur uh, during the sport injury approximately 44 to 83%. So this can be explained by the intrinsic chains biomechanical chains and biochemical uh, chains in uh, the Achilles tendons. And simultaneous rupture uh, usually uh, become more commonly recently because of the patients uh, in the elderly population uh, return to uh, do a sport activity. Uh, other etiology that can be explained uh, because of the poor uh, vascular uh, uh, supply uh, to the tendons and also the tendon degenerations. You can see uh, uh, on the right hand side picture, this is the gastrocnemius and soleus uh, uh, tendon complex. As you can see uh, they have very have a very small uh, vessel to supply on the tendons on the both uh, lateral and the medial. And also some uh, medicine can cause the tendon degeneration such as the corticosteroid and also fluoroquinolone group. And the last one uh, we call exercise induced hyperemia if you do uh, uh, too much exercise and uh, during a lot of heat that can cause uh, rupture of Achilles tendon uh, as well. So uh, uh, the mechanism of injury usually occur uh, when uh, the patient tries to push off. So in this video, I go back one more time. You can see David Beckham's and now it's his rupture. And uh, you will feel like someone kicked you from the back. That's why he turned his face to the back to see if someone kick him or not. But actually nothing there. Okay, you can see that. Okay, and now he know his Achilles was torn and he uh, had difficulty to uh, balance himself. Uh, based on the WAOS guideline, uh, they have a consensus that you can uh, make a diagnosis and the patient you have a questionable for the Achilles rupture. So uh, you need to have two uh, from three positive. The first one we call a clinical Thompson positive by squeeze on the calf tendons. Usually you, you should see the ankle uh, motions when you squeeze the calf. So the ankle usually go a uh, plantar fraction in this direction. But in this case, uh, they have no movement on the ankle joint. Uh, it means there should be have loss of continuity of the Achilles tendons. Number two, uh, they decrease the plantar uh, fraction strength. So you can see on the right hand side, Okay, and uh, left hand side, if your Achilles tendon function well, you should just have some tension. Your, uh, the Achilles usually uh, have more power than the extensor groove of the ankle. Uh, your foot usually go on the plantar fraction positions. But on the right hand side, you can see uh, the ankle is slightly moved uh, upward compared to the left hand side. And when you have lots of continuity, when you want to push the uh, uh, ankle down to the plantar fraction, uh, usually you cannot do, uh, if you can do, uh, if you have some accessory muscle or you can do from a flexor uh, house longus tendon or flexor digitum longus, but it will weak uh, compared to you do by Achilles tendons. And number three, we call palpable gap. If you have a torn, you will have a gap. So when you are falling from the proximal part and then you will see the gap. Uh, on the video is uh, something uh, usually occur in right in that locations. And for the last one, uh, you can see there increase uh, plastics uh, uh, when you put the uh, uh, pressure on the dorsal uh, fractions. If the equilibrium was normal, you will feel the resistance uh, when you uh, perform the ankle dorsal fraction. But if the equilibrium tendon torn, uh, the resistance will be gone or uh, have um, minimal resistance uh, will be uh, different when you put the same force. Uh, the size and how we have the tendon torn will be easier to do uh, the dorsal fraction compared to the normal side. On the X-ray, usually X-ray not routinely uh, sent, but uh, I prefer to send a lateral uh, radiograph of the foot or ankle because uh, in some time you may sometimes you may see the avulsion uh, of the insertion of Achilles tendon. You will see the a small bone that's a floating or upward displacement uh, into behind the ankle. In this uh, patients, you can uh, see uh, they have some Achilles tendon rupture as well, but they would turn from the insertion instead of uh, 
on on the mid substance as you usually see in on a classical uh, equilateral rupture. So MRI uh, usually you perform MRI uh, later on. Usually MRI can be used uh, for diagnosis and also uh, see the detail uh, of the torn, uh, the uh, size of the gap. But they also have some investigation that can be used even earlier than MRI. Uh, you can do the ultrasound. It's something that's more uh, inexpensive and you can do uh, at the clinic. Uh, if uh, your hospital have uh, a radiologist, they can do, do that. Uh, they can do it for you. So uh, you need uh, to do the differential diagnosis. Uh, all of this was uh, something uh, uh, occur on the Achilles tendon. So the first one, uh, calcaneal tuberosity avulsion fracture. This usually fell uh, through the bone. And peripheral slip avulsion Achilles tendon rupture as a, a detachment uh, rupture torn to the insertion of Achilles. And the last one, the missubstance rupture, which is we're going to focus today, which is the most commonly occur in uh, acute Achilles tendon rupture. So this is the first one uh, to show you the uh, calcaneal tuberosity avulsion fracture. This is a uh, we should be considered as a urgent uh, situation in orthopedics because the bone that uh, pinching on the skin over here they can cause skin to, uh, to be die and skin necrosis and can cause bone problem uh, uh, after. So uh, in this case, it usually uh, require a fixation. Uh, you can do perform by using a screw. Uh, in some situation, you can do by using a suture anchor. And another uh, subtype, uh, they can have some uh, detachment or injury to the attachment uh, at the insertion uh, to the back of the calcaneus, we call peripheral slip avulsion. So you should see a small bone like that that detach from the insertion of the Achilles tendons. So in this case, you cannot uh, perform the conservative management uh, compared to the missubstance injury. That's why I want you to do some uh, lateral radiograph uh, to differentiate these uh, problems because uh, the treatment will be different because this one you require uh, surgery. Uh, by performing the surgery, you may need to remove that bone spur and reattachment the achilles tendon to the new footprint that I show you on the right hand side picture. Uh, for today, we're focusing on the missed up stand uh, injury, which is different, but you can uh, treatment by conservative and also by surgical treatment. So the pro and con that when we uh, consider for uh, choose the treatment for the patients. Okay, for the non-surgical treatment, uh, uh, usually we can prefer with uh, everybody, but uh, for the surgical treatment, you, it's a uh, general uh, concept that uh, we usually go with the uh, high demand and young patients. But like I said, if the patient is uh, low demand and elderly patients, uh, you can try non-surgical treatment, but for young active athlete or high demand patient, we prefer to do surgical treatment. Advantage of non-surgical treatment because you have no complication from the surgery and also from the anesthesia and the cost is uh, relatively low compared uh, to the open uh, surgery. But the disadvantage of the non-surgical treatment, uh, number one is re-rupture rate approximately 10 to 12%. Um, even though the new uh, research they uh, propose the incident of the re-rupture may be low as same as the surgical treatment, but this needs to be treated by functional rehabilitations. And also the over lengthening because uh, when you do a non-surgical treatment, you cannot tighten in the rupture site. Uh, it will heal uh, as it is and usually is over lengthening uh, than uh, the previous injury. And this usually may affect with the strength of the Achilles tendon at the end. And also when uh, you do immobilization, maybe a week or two that can cause some immobilization syndrome. Okay, and also a poor hygiene and also cast complication in some patient who uh, put the cast on the patient. But uh, nowadays we are unlikely to use cast. We usually use a splint and do a functional rehabilitation by breast. Uh, so for non-surgical treatment, uh, the, in the old day we used a serial casting for six weeks, and and we found if we immobilization for six weeks, the tendon have this organization. Even the tendon heal, but is not uh, strong as same as the previous injury and uh, then we modify to do uh, just a short period of immobilization maybe two weeks and following by early re rehabilitation or even now we do a functional rehabilitation by putting the breast and then the patient can move even a couple of days after the injury and we found the last uh, two techniques have a tendency to have low uh, re-rupture rate and the patient can 
return to activity earlier than the uh, classical treatment uh, zero casting for six weeks. So uh, for the functional rehabilitation, you can uh, put the uh, we call the boot a uh, well core boot like that because they can adjustify uh, the ankle of the uh, the the ankle of the ankle joint. So uh, for the surgical treatment, uh, they have uh, many choice for the surgery. Uh, you can do by standard open repair. You can do by minimal open repair. You can do percutaneous without endoscopic control, and you can do percutaneous with endoscopic control. I would go with the standard uh, open surgery. You can make a it's quite long uh, midline incisions on the back of the Achilles tendons, and then you find the proximal stem, and then the distal stem, and then you repair. So the Good thing of the open, uh, uh, you can see everything well, and you can repair uh, directly. You can add a uh, number of the suture as much as you want. So the strength will be the strongest compared to other techniques. But the problem is when, uh, when you go uh, with the uh, open techniques, uh, the problem is uh, you can uh, damage to the vascular supply, and then uh, it can cause a vascular compromise or wound complications. So. Uh, in the past, you can use a paramedial incision. Yeah, you can use a midline incision uh, based on the angiosome theory because the vascular supply comes from the size uh, of the Achilles tendon. If you make incision on the midline, so uh, you have tendency to get the vascular supply from either side. But if you make an in incision over chip to the medial side, so uh, you may have a problem with the vascular supply that cannot uh, come from the lateral side due to uh, the watershed area. So here's an example of the uh, open uh, repair. You can see the proximal stump there, a distal stump there, and then uh, uh, we can tie uh, together. Uh, and uh, the incision length is approximately seven to eight uh, centimeter, as you see here. Uh, as I mentioned, the advantage that you can approximate uh, both in and end well, and then uh, immediate provide strength and then allow early rehabilitation and weight bearing. And usually I allow the patient to put weight uh, on it uh, about four to five weeks from the repair. The disadvantage, as I mentioned, uh, they can violate to the blood supply leading to wound complication, can be zero nerve injury, scar pain, and also poor cosmesis. And because of that uh, disadvantage, so nowadays they have developed the minimal invasive uh, surgery you can uh, decrease the size by using a mini open uh, technique so you can use some instrument to help uh, for the percutaneous uh, technique uh, to try to decrease the complication from standard uh, open repair so advantage a lower rate of wound complication but the downside is still have a potential zero nerve injury because it's a blind technique you don't see the nerve sometimes the needle that you poke into the uh, the skin can uh, can poke into the, uh, the nerve as well and Sometimes can cause tendon uh, bulky and malalignment of the tendons. So here was uh, how it looked after some instrument that can use for percutaneous repair. Because you can uh, uh, poke uh, the needle, in, insert the needle from the side, uh, from the medial, and exit to the lateral. And you can see that when you poke the needle, you can't see the nerve underneath the skin. And sometimes you can poke into uh, the, 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 the needle can poke into the nerve and cause the zero nerve injury as well. And uh, now uh, the new technique that developed the uh, endoscopic uh, control add-on to the uh, repair of Achilles tendon by performing the percutaneous, but you can see the nerve. So once you see the nerve, uh, you will uh, be able to uh, uh, insert your instrument. You can see here, but you can insert your instrument by not uh, poking into the nerve. It will be safety uh, for you here. Yeah, see that? that is the nerve on the behind you, and you can poke. Uh, uh, the instrument into the tendons by not injury to the nerve. Compared to the 100% uh, blind technique, you cannot see anything. You just poke the needle in, and you can you can directly injury to the nerve, which is a different. Okay, but uh, for the configuration of the suture, you can see here we call a crit, uh, crit cross and square on the bottom. Uh, we do uh, on the vice versa on the top. So we go with double strand uh, suture for repair the equestrian uh, rupture. And here's how it looks after we uh, perform the proximal part. You can pull uh, the stem. If the stem falling when you pull, it means you get a secure uh, of the tendon on the proximal part. And then uh, on the distal part, you can perform without the endoscopic control. And then you can close the gap. And here's our final picture. So compared to the standard open with a long incision, you can convert to the small incision by six pole pole. And it's quite safe. 
uh, and rate of the sternal nerve injury is uh, low. They still have some uh, sternal nerve injury, but it's not from direct injury, but it can be caught from the suture or from the tightening of the, uh, of the soft tissue that can be uh, pinching on the nerve. So keep in mind, it's not 100% for the sternal nerve injury, but uh, the incident is low, low compared to other techniques. And here is a picture that uh, to show you after we perform, when we do the squeezed head and then the ankle can move again. Okay, for take home message uh, for you, so you need to understand the diagnosis, uh, how to make a correct diagnosis for Achilles tendon rupture to from four up WOS guideline. You uh, all you need to be remember of this. So when you take call in the ER and when you see the patient, you can test them if they're positive two from three, uh, two from four. You can ask to be diagnosis of the Achilles tendon rupture, and. Um, uh, please consider to send the lateral radio collapse to make sure that they not have the uh, slip avulsion or uh, calcaneal tuber tuberosity avulsion fracture. Uh, if a uh, calcaneal tuberosity avulsion is an urgent uh, situation, you cannot let the patient go home. You need to be consulted immediately. And MRI usually require in uh, some uh, situation that you want to prefer the percutaneous technique repair because they require uh, pox, uh, the distal stump approximately 2 to 3 cm from the insertion. So it's be able to uh, save that you can use the percutaneous technique. Uh, for mid-substance uh, rupture, you can treat either by casting or surgical repair depending on the patient age and demand. So if they have low, uh, low demand and older age group, you can use a cast. Uh, uh, you can do go splint or cast for 10 to 14 days and following by the rehab, early rehabilitations. For surgery, uh, you prefer in young, uh, high demand and active patients. Uh, surgery can be performed either by open and percutaneous technique. So uh, in our country, uh, standard open uh, techniques still be uh, uh, general perform in our hospital. But if you want to do the minimal invasive by endoscopic assisted surgery, uh, need to be uh, uh, perform in uh, the surgeon who have experience and when perform endoscopic control uh, you need to be uh, learning more in terms of technical demand uh, and also the complication for the endoscopic control can cause the compartment syndrome if you uh, perform for too long because of the water that you use that can cause the compartment syndrome okay thank you for your attention